Right, the scope's working. Um, after the last video, there was a crackle and a pop. Uh, I turned it off pretty quickly and uh, brought it down to the workshop. We've had the back of it, and it's, I don't know if you can see here, but one of these, I don't know if you can see down there behind that filter, there's not much light here. That's going to give you some more light on the subject. Down the back there, below that input connector, there's a one of those main suppression um, capacitors that have got a built-in resistor safety cap. You, s you see it there behind the switch. That's the thing that exploded. Um, that's, that's fine, it's out of the circuit now. The resistor's gone open circuit. They're designed to uh, do that. As I say, they are a safety cap, but uh, they are designed to uh, blow open circuit, and that's exactly what it's done. Um, the other thing I did find out is actually this was built for the US Army. Um, I don't think it means US military, not sure what that means. Option 1, however, does mean it's a high spec version that has better shielding. Instantly thought, uh, shit, I've been running it on 240 volts, and maybe that's what's killed it. Anyway, I'm running it on 115 volts at the moment, um, and it's working. Not correctly, but it is working. Now, there's nothing on the back of the unit to say what voltage it is. Um, so at the moment I'm assuming it is 115 volts. It's working fine in 115 volts. All the displays bright and everything. Um, I need to check the manual. Um, it might be because it's a switch mode power supply. It might be able to cope for 115 to 240, and the cap may just have been coincidental. Um, but the main problem I've got here is there's a see that distortion in the the, the trace here. This is irrelevant to what you do to any of the input. It's something to do with the cathode ray tube, I think, or something to do with the drive to the cathode ray tube. Now, if anyone's got any idea what that could be, maybe they could give me a clue, because I haven't got a clue when it comes to things like this. The CRTs and all the driving circuitry is um, a bit beyond me. Um, I did try and sort of run a tape head demagnetizer across the screen to see if there's any sort of magnetism built up but that didn't seem to make any difference at all um, but then again it wasn't a very strong magnet, magnet, uh, demagnetizer um, the rest of it works um, the scope responds well it's it's got some lovely features on it actually it's got this delayed time base on it which has basically got two separate time bases you've got A which is a conventional eight time base you've got B which is a second time base that you can use through this delayed time base circuit, which I probably would never use. And you can have them alternate, so you can have them both on at the same time. Got all the normal things, all the uh, the trigger trigger uh, options are here. It's got uh, two triggers for the, the two time bases, which is nice. Um, 100 megahertz bandwidth, which is also good. Um, just the normal things you expect to find on a, an analog scope. Got the beam finder there. Um, I'm not sure what this trigger view does, but we'll uh, have to read the manual on that. Bandwidth limited to 20 megahertz, which is very useful to keep out, you know, unnecessary hash that you're not really interested in. Um, a and B sweep separation. So I, th I assume that means that when you run A and B, it keeps the separation of the sweeps apart on the on the scope. Um, You've got the normal normal mode for triggering and auto and the free run, which it is now. And then you've got TV field, if you press them, I think, both together. Um, you've got positive and negative going slopes, which is what you expect to see on all trigger menus. You know, So you can trigger on the leading or the falling edge. Um, AC coupling, DC coupling, and DC divided by 10. Now, I don't know if that's just a higher voltage input. Uh, it looks like it possibly is. Normal thing for source, internal source, line which triggers off the line frequency of the mains, so it, the scope will always trigger to 50 hertz in the U, in the UK. Um, external trigger, that's your external trigger there, and you can run that off a signal generator or, or frequency reference if you wish to. Um, and then you've got bandwidth limiting, so you've got full, full bandwidth, that's basically no filters in uh, in the circuit. HF, HF reject, which basically puts a uh, high a low pass filter on and a left reject, which is basically the opposite thing. You know, it will let uh, high frequency through, but ignore any sort of low frequency stuff. As I say, it's got the time, delayed time base here with a nice vernier type um, control here. 
Um, normal AC DC coupling on the skirt, you didn't expect. Um, it has got a uh, goes down to quite a low uh, volts range. I seem to remember on these. Um, I'll work out the display here, uh, but it looks like that was probably slightly slippery. What is that? Is that five millivolts? Yeah, I mean that dial, that dial sort of is, Oh, there we go. There's the minimum scale. So two millivolts for division. Um, there you go. And I think it's. I think this has got a time ten mode, but I'm not sure. Might, that might be another scope I'm thinking of. But uh, yep. It's, uh, you can see it is working. I just need to work out what that hump is in in the screen. And if I can get rid of that, then uh, it's actually strange enough. It seems to be. It's very dependent on where the the trace is on the screen. So. If anyone's got any ideas, uh, maybe they could let me know, and uh, thanks for watching.